can see far below where the cool waters flow from the rim of the canyon gazing on the wonders that grew at God's command seems that he's so near me I can feel the touch of his hand Night And the day is in flight What a glorious sight From the rim of the canyon From the rim of the canyon From the rim of the of the canyon. Hello, Buff. All right, Jane. You can take it easy a while, champ. We're gonna get a little rest. Hello, Gene. Hello, Pat. All set to win the race today? Well, I'm all set to drive it. I don't know whether I'm set to win it or not. If you was riding champ, you'd sure win it. Yeah. I could win a race myself if I could ride champ. If you could ride it. With a bit like this, I could sure ride him. You try using a bit like that on Champ, and I'll have to use it on you. Can't say I'd blame you. You wouldn't want a bit like that in your mouth, would you, Champ? Who you after this time, Pat? Had a breakup state. Lost three men. A guy by the name of Regan, Charlie Lewis, Jake Fargo. Norm. Look like pretty bad hombres. Yeah, I know Fargo. It was my dad who sent him away. Your dad did? 20 years ago. Then maybe if your dad sent him away, you ought to help me put him back again. Maybe I will. Right now, I've got a race to drive. Well, I'm rooting for you. Good luck. Thanks. I'll see you over at the starting line in about 10 minutes, boys. Okay, Gene. Hello, Gene. Say, you better gallop down to the Junction Cafe. Matt Kimbrough's is beating your time. Yeah, last thing we seen, it was holding hands. Thanks, fellas. I'll look into the situation. There you are, Mr. Kimbrough. The best cup of coffee in the house. And you're the best-dressed waitress in town, Lily. And the least dressed, too. This is what they used to wear in the old days, long before we ever heard of Canyon Junction. You should have heard of it sooner. Sugar, sugar. Thanks, Lily. Jean! Hello, Lily. Look, isn't it Pash? Matt gave it to me. Hi, Matt. Jean? I wanted to ask you to go to the dance tonight, but I uh, guess I'm a little late. See you some other time. See you on the start line, Matt. Sure, Jean. Good luck to you. In the race, I mean. Jean? How do you know I won't go with you to the dance tonight? You didn't even ask me. Wait a minute, Lily. I asked you. And I asked you. Now. And I just decided to go with whoever wins the race this afternoon. If you win it, I go with you. If Jean wins it, I go with Jean. You forgot something, Lily. There's three coaches in this race. Suppose Tex Rollins wins. I had a date with Tex. Hold them steady, boys. Stay in line. Jane! Good luck! Get ready! Get set! Go! All right, 
That's three. That's all we need. Listen to all that yelling. There must be a thousand people over there. Over there, not here. Come on. Marbles, Matt. You win. You can pick me and tax up, too. We gotta have a lift back to town. A lift? <laughs> what do you mean, a lift? Gene, you cracked up. I was gonna look you riding into town on the winner's coach. You look like you're the winner. And I am, brother. I sure am. I'll tell Lily you're sorry you couldn't make the dance. Ah, hey, wait a minute, Matt. I can't walk back to town, not on this. That's the best news I've heard in years. You can't walk on it, you can't dance on it. Say, uh, it might rain tonight, Gene. In case you get cold. Wear this. Listen, Matt. In case you get lonesome, Gene. That ghost town's only a few miles over here. I hear tell those ghosts shake a mean rumba. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot something. Here. <laughs> yeah! I'm dancing tonight with Lily around and around and around. And Lily is such a dearly, the sweetest girl that I've
Well, hello there. I can hear you, Mr. Hanlon. Not Hanlon. Autry. Oh. I... Excuse me. I guess I was half dreaming. Good place for it. Won't you sit down? Thanks. What happened to your leg? It's my ankle. I was driving in that stagecoach race. I lost the wheel about three miles from here. And you walked here? I left here. Let's get that boot off. Sorry I don't have my first aid kit with me. I usually carry one. It might hurt a little. I hate to put you to all this trouble, Miss Lambert. You know me? Ruth Lambert? Sure. You teach school at the junction. I've seen you in town. I've seen you there, too. Usually, you're with Lily Shannon. I'd have been out with her tonight, but it hadn't been for this. Miss Shannon's attractive. You must be very disappointed. Well, you can't win every time. May I ask why you're way out here? Oh, I often ride out here on Saturdays. It's lonely, but I like it. When I first came in, you thought I was somebody else. Hanlon? Thanks a lot, Miss Lambert. Guess I'd better get my boot back on if I'm ever gonna get it on. Feel better? Lots. When do you figure on riding back to town? Now, I guess. It'll be dark pretty soon. When you get back, would you mind having somebody bring my horse champ out to me? I'll do better than that. My horse will be glad to take both of us. All right? Thanks again. You know, Miss Lambert, you shouldn't ride out here. Not alone. Three convicts escaped from prison yesterday. They could be heading this way. But I'm not afraid. The ghost of Morna's flat will look out for me. My horse. He's gone. Probably straight off someplace. I'll find him for you. But I left him tied right to that post. He took it. Big Tim Hanlon took my horse. Miss Lambert. Big Tim Hanlon's grave is right up the street. You wouldn't understand. The horse probably straight out in the country to get some grass. You better wait inside. It might take a while. Hey, you. How about passing out some of that grub? Oh. Sure. Get down and sit. Trade you this one for it. He got me a horse. Always go foot, all by my own shop. They call me the local John. <laughs> he admits it. Hey, ain't that Gene Autry's horse? Now, you wouldn't accuse me of being a horse thief, would you, Grandpa? Well, well no, 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 sir. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you bought him, huh? That's right. Maybe I did. <laughs> And does this smell good? Mm. Bacon and beans. Sure use a lot of that. Pop, got a couple extra plates? Hey. Ain't I seen you some place before? Maybe. I get around a lot. Yeah. I'll get them plates. Oh. This bacon's about then. Coffee's good. Pop. I know who you are. You're Jake Fargo. Uh, now, don't get your dander up, Dad. Drop your gun belt, Jake. You all better drop your gun belts. Now, let's talk this over, Dad. 
No use getting excited. Why don't you have some coffee? Charlie, watch this old guy. Come on, Rick. I circled the town. That horse of yours must have headed for home on the double. I wonder why he took it. He did take my horse. That's why you couldn't find it. Big Tim Hanlon took my horse, but... But why? Miss Lambert, in all my life, I've never heard of a ghost that steals horses. Well, what can we do now? We can't walk back to town. At least you can't, not with that bad ankle. I found a place up the street, an old hay barn. You'll be comfortable here. With my ghost? I won't need the blanket. The fella gave it to me, he'll be here tomorrow. He'll give us a lift back to the junction. You sure he'll come back? Sure he'll be here. He's going to the dance tonight. He'll be here tomorrow to tell me how ladies stayed out and how much fun he had. With Lily Shannon? She means a lot to you, doesn't she? Means a lot when a smart guy tries to beat my time. You sure that's all it means? That's all. Jean? Do you hear music? Listen. Wait here, I'll be right back. I'll go with you. I'm not afraid of ghosts, either. That proves it. Somebody's prowling around this town. And it's not Big Tim Hanlon's ghost. in here. It's a table set for two. It's for us. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. He knew we'd be hungry. He got dinner ready. There's an old prospector up at the rim of the canyon, just beyond here. His name's Loco John. He arranged this. Take the one with the saddle, unless you want to ride bareback.
saddle all you want? I'll take the horse, too, if he's got sense enough to stop. <laughs> Get this straight, Ruth. You say you've talked to the ghost of Big Tim Hanlon? Several times. When was the first time? It was my very first visit to the ghost town. Of course, I'd read the history of Mourner's Flat and about the Bonanza King. His life, the background of this town, fascinated me. As soon as I got the job teaching school in Canyon Junction, I rode out here. It was just like in the book, just as I had imagined it. Of course, it was all empty of life now, forgotten place. But I could picture it the way it used to be. I stopped by the old cemetery, and there was his grave. Big Tim Hanlon's grave. I could see it as he used to be, when he was the Bonanza King. A big, tall, fine-looking man. Very sure of himself, boss of the town and of his own destiny. It seemed hard to believe he was dead. That day, all alone here, I went into the old Bonanza. It was late afternoon. I guess I stayed pretty late living there in the past. It got dark and I'd lit an old candle. I don't know how long I sat there. I thought at the time I might have dozed off to sleep. But now, now I know I didn't. I was just sitting there, daydreaming and reading. I could see this place like it was, filled with people and music, men talking about gold and silver, about big strikes, grub stakes. Hello. somewhere in the shadow. I didn't hear the voice again. That's all he said. The first time, I mean. But you have heard it since? Often. I've been coming out here every Saturday. And in the evening, he talks to me from the shadows. What about? He knew I was lonely. He wanted to help me. Did he? I think he has, already. I told him about seeing a man in Canyon Junction, a stranger, and about falling in love with him. But this man, this stranger, was in love with someone else. But we didn't always talk about me. I'm not that selfish. He told me quite a bit about himself. But you never actually saw him. I don't know, Jean. I don't know. Mr. Hanlon! Mr. Hanlon! Hey, Tim! That's no ghost. Sounds like it came from the street. Mr. Hanlon! Who are you? Gene Autry of the Flying A. And this is Miss Lambert from the junction. Yeah. I know you, Gene. I know you, too. School teacher. <laughs> About time you were starting for home. We have no horses. Yeah, I know. I know who stole them to. Leastways, 
I know who stole your horse, Gene. It was Jake Fargo. He's busted himself out of jail. You must be mistaken, John. You probably saw a horse that looked like Champ. <laughs> yeah, you mean to say I wouldn't know Champ when I saw him? Listen, son. I knew Champ when he was just a wee little coat. And I knew his sire for him. And I knew the horses sired his sire for him. Well, <laughs> I've got to sit myself down and rest a mite. Long walk. My feet hurt. Which way was Fargo heading with Champ? <laughs> he wasn't heading nowhere with Champ. He was heading after him. Champ broke loose. Out to my camp. Then he'll go back home. Yeah, he would, lesson Fargo shot him. You know, I wouldn't put nothing past that critter. He'd shoot a horse just as quick as he'd shoot a man. I read about Jake Fargo in my book. He robbed a stagecoach 20 years ago. It was a gold shipment from the Lost Widow Mine, Tim Hanlon's mine. It was a shipment of silver dollars from Big Tim's Bonanza. Yeah, gee, right, miss. He was just a little shaver in them days, but his pa was Marshall. And Steve took right out after them fellers, and he booked him when he back. <laughs> Same day. No. No, you're wrong, John. As I remember it, my dad never did get Big Tim's money back. It was about $30,000. In those days, the stage line ran right along the rim of the canyon, between here and the junction. Every Monday morning, they carried the weekend profits from Hanlon's Bonanza to the stage bank. They carried it in an old gunny sack, kicked under the driver's seat. Three men found out about the old gunny sack. Jake Fargo, Charlie Lewis, and Cash Collins. the gunny sack. That afternoon, my dad was talking to Big Tim about the holdup when Fargo walked in. Collins and Lewis were with him. They didn't know the driver had lived to identify him until my dad drew his gun. Fargo and his men shot their way out of town and headed back for the rim of the canyon. My dad had a posse organized and took out after him. Dad was riding a horse called Wonder. Looks a lot like my horse, Champ. He ought to. Wonder was Champ's granddad. With my dad on Wonder, that was a hard riding combination. Fargo and his men found that out.
buy everybody a new hat if they're not headed for Mourner's Bend. Taking the drop. You guys are too chicken. You can try it out. Run the posse. Oh. This is where we split up. Emerson, take half the boys and check the south bank. The rest of you check the north. Which way do you think Fargo's headed? Well, he can't go north. He can't go south. There's only one place he can go, Warner's Rocks. Which way are you going, Steve? I'll stay here and see they don't double back. something up there. Take it easy. Like this. It's only a little shale. Go for maybe. Take it easy. That's right. Take it easy. Drop your guns. You too, Collins. I'll get you, Steve, next time. Next time, maybe. Not this time. 10 years, 15. It won't make any difference. 30 years or 40 years? We're gonna be a couple of old men, Jake. That's the way it went, John. When my dad made the arrest, they'd already ditched the $30,000 and wouldn't talk. So big Tim Hanlon never did get his money back. Say, by the way, uh, speaking of Hanlon, when you walked into town a while ago, you called his name. Why? You must have been hearing things. Where'd Ruth go? I don't know. Ruth? Hey, Ruth! John!
said a word, Jean. Are you fascinated or just amazed? I'm speechless. Where'd you get that outfit? From Big Tim Hanlon. I saw him, Jean. Where? Right up there on the balcony. I came back from the street, looked up, and saw him standing there. He spoke to me. Was he real? Very real. He told me about a room upstairs, a secret closet with an old trunk in it. This dress was in the trunk. It belonged to a woman Tim Hanlon once loved, an actress named Belle Travers. He gave her this dress a quarter of a century ago. And now he's given it to you. He said, if I wore it tonight, I'd have more appeal to a man. So the ghost wants you to have appeal for it. He didn't mean it for himself. Well, where is he? What happened to him? He just disappeared. I walked up the stairs. He vanished. He said, we should go on with dinner. He said, you and I... He said, you and I what? He said, you and I might still be hungry. I am. Everything all right? It is now. What's the matter? It's gone. Cash Collins died in stir. Who else knew about it? Nobody. Unless... son cleaned this out. And I think I know whose son it was. You didn't come here for dinner with no dame. You came here for that dough. Where is it, cowboy? Who threw it? You were looking straight at us. One of the same pouches, all right. Silver's all dated 20 years ago. That's from the coach, all right. It's just one thing. We're about 30,000 cartwheels short. Where is it? I don't know. Ask the ghost. I'll ask the guy who threw it. Where is he? How do I know? Who is he? Big Tim Hanlon. Lady, don't kid me. Tim Hanlon's dead. He died after the Lost Widow mine was flooded while he was rigging some pumps to pump it dry. We heard about it in stir. Listen, the guy that threw that bag can also throw slugs. I don't like the idea of just standing around waiting to be potted. All right. You and Charlie take a look around. Wait a minute. Why do it the hard way? Maybe we can have some help from the little lady. Just a minute. Take your hands off of her. The spot you're in, cowboy, you better keep out of this. Let him talk if he wants to. You know, Autry, the more I look at you, the more I see your old man. I'll hold your guns. Do a thorough job of it. It'll be a pleasure. It's up to you, cowboy. We want the rest of that dough, and we want to know who threw the bag on the tape. <laughs> Thank you. 
me, Jake, honest. It's me, Pago. Big team handler. I'm right outside with your $30,000. Why don't you come and get it? That's him. Remember that voice if I live to be a hundred. Of course it's him. What's the matter, Pago? Afraid of ghosts? All right, come on with me. Both of you. Gee. Look, Jake. There's somebody in the old opera house. Yeah. Stay with the horses. Don't leave them for a second. Sure, Jake. Tim drew them outside so we could escape. We've got to hurry, Jean. told us why you're playing the host. That's an explanation I really owe to Ruth. And an apology. When I first played Ghost and talked to you out of the shadows, it was partly for fun. 
and partly just to talk to somebody. The reason I kept it up? Well, I was afraid you might not come here again if you knew I was a living man playing a game. You must have enjoyed the game, Mr. Hammond. I probably gave you a lot of laughs. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. I was lonely. The only company I ever had was when old local John came here about once a month to bring me provisions. John? All I want is just one little nip, Mr. Hanley. Anything worth nipping was taken out of here long ago. You still haven't told us why you're Why not... I'm not dead? Why I'm not under that tombstone in the old churchyard? The question's not out of order. I was just a kid at the time. I went to your funeral. When my lost widow mine was flooded, I tried to rescue one of my crew. But I found he was dead. That gave me an idea. He was just about my bill. His face was disfigured beyond recognition, so I changed clothes with a dead man, went out through an escape shaft, and went to Mexico. They buried that miner right here in this town under the name of Big Tim Hanlon. That's the funeral you attended, Gene. You saw a chance to disappear and dead. Why? Business reasons. I made too much money here in Mourner's Flat. And I spent too much. There was a young actress. Looked a lot like Ruth. Not as nice as Ruth. Her name was Belle Travers. Ruth wearing a dress I once got her. I also got her an apartment house in San Francisco. A stable, a racehorse. Put her in a play on Broadway. Play failed me, so did the mines around here. And so did Bell. I came back here a few months ago to look for that $30,000 that Jake Fargo stole from me. I know it was hidden here somewhere. I found it three days ago. And you didn't clear out with it? I hung around waiting for Saturday to say goodbye to Ruth. You're in love with her, Tim? <laughs> I'm too old, Jean, much too old. Besides, Ruth's in love with you. Tim. When you walked into town, that was a break. So I set the table for two over at the hotel. <laughs> oh, as Cupid, I was going strong until Jake Fargo came along. <laughs> but don't you worry about that. Between all of us, we can... John! John! I'll bet that local old fool went across the street after all. I wouldn't want to take your bet. Gene, where are you going? Through the tunnel. Go out the front, the light will be behind me. That old man made a crazy play. Don't try to cover him, Gene. Stay here with Ruth.
Thanks, John. Thanks for the try. We lose those horses, we're sunk. Get! Come on, boy. Get out of here. Snag those horses, I'll stop on you. said how. Smoke him out. Keep me covered. nothing will. That wind will carry the fire right down to the stable. windows. Make as much noise as you can. That's coming from the hotel. Well, it can't be just the day not doing all that shooting. Oh, man. 
man's gone after him. Now, maybe you'd better go after your man. I can't. Somebody stole my horse. <laughs> sure, I did. <laughs> Come on, we'll get it. <laughs> about this for 20 years, sitting in a cell, dreaming about it, waiting for 20 years to see old Steve Autry standing up in front of me with his hands like that. Let's see you take it, Steve. <laughs> This is the first time Cupid ever had to play horse thief. But I did get you and Gene stranded together, didn't I? Do you really think he'll be all right? Why, of course he will. That young fellow's so much like his father that for a while or night I almost thought he was Steve Autry. On your way, woman, you've got a date with a man. Well, are you going to stay here? I'm afraid not. They burn me out. Don't you worry about me, Ruth. I'll find another ghost town. <laughs> With $30,000, I could even buy one. Goodbye, my dear. Good luck. Goodbye. Mr. Hanlon. Thanks for being such a good ghost. <laughs> That's me. Big Tim Hanlon, the good ghost. <laughs> the good ghost. <laughs> Are you all right, Gene? Fine. What happened to the other one? Did he get away? Champ took care of him. Where'd you find your horse? Big Tim Hammond. It was like I said. He took my horse so that we could... It's the first time I ever wanted to thank a horse thief. He went away, Gene, to find another ghost town. Look what happened to Morna's flat. I wonder if Big Tim really existed. Anyhow, Canyon Junction still stands. There's plenty of time to make the dance. They last until early in the morning. You mean... you still want to keep your date, 
with Lily Shannon? Now, who said anything about Lily Shannon? Well, you're all dressed for the occasion. Yes, sir, I'm taking the Bell of Mourners Flats to the dance. Well, will I... Will I have time to fix my hair? We will if we don't spend it all standing here talking. Night and the day is in flight. What a glorious sight from the rim of the canyon. From the rim of the canyon. 